Gentlemen, welcome back to the shop today. We are peeling back the foreskin on what is black magic juju industrial automation. And we are starting uh, step by each with the simplest component we can find, a one axis pneumatic robot. That is a pneumatic cylinder. In the previous video, we controlled it just with a choo-choo valve. Oh, the hair's off. In this video, we're gonna, uh, we're gonna brain box it up here. Off the hop here, on the subject of black magic voodoo witchery, as any night school MBA will tell you, that which is unmeasured cannot be improved. That is to say, in order to improve the chooch factor, we need to be able to measure said chooch factor. What we are going to do is measure both the pressure and the speed of actuation, because this is going in... Uh, this ain't no school project. This is an actual thing what's got to work. So we are going to measure how fast this thing actuates with the craptacular manual valve. Then we're going to upgrade to an electrical system. And then we're going to upgrade further still into a programmable logic controller. The method to our madness, what for accurately measuring the stroke time is... Of course, the, the tool that gives us visual aids when we're bumble fucking around in the shop. Super, super accurate, incredible tool what'll cost you less than a, a quick trip on the snap-on rape van in order to get a, a crappy rebranded meter. But in this case, we're going to use two other instruments. And those are, okay, here is a dam loss made in Denmark pressure transmitter. This is actually a transducer. Of course, a transducer is something that takes one form of energy, changes it to another. In this case, we take pressure, air pressure, changes it to milliamps. It changes it to current. So looking at this 25 bar, 14.7 uh, PSI to the bar, that's going to be right around 360 PSI max. That's full scale from zero to 365 now, this is a 4 to 20 milliamp device. The 4 is the floating 0 because if it's 0, it tells you that there's a fault in the system. There's a broken wire. So that's very clever. 4 to 20 milliamps, and this will run 10 to 30 volts DC, just two lines in. We see we can have a, uh, we have a resistor here, and I'm willing to bet this is set up for an Arduino. So that'll be 220 ohms. Of course, 220 times the 20 milliamps gives us the voltage, which will be around 5 volts, which is okay, but we want the voltage to actually be higher, the drop across there to be higher, so that our signal-to-noise ratio is better for the oscilloscope. There's going to be lots of noise coming off of this thing. So what we'll do is we will we'll feed this 30 volts and then we'll put a one kilo ohm resistor in there and then we'll measure with the probes across there and there and this guy is just a, a low pass filter looks like probably a 20 hertz roll off or something like that so this is uh, <laughs> we dug deep deep in the old bag of tricks in order to find this but it's good to have this sort of shit around because you can always fabric cobble together you know something like this to measure off the shelf would be thousands of doll hairs and this basically they give this shit away free at the getting spot speaking to the gift that keeps on giving look at this Ugh, my tips got the drip all over the place gotta take a visit to the feedlot store and get some cipro what this is going to do is show us the instantaneous pressure so we'll be able to see when it starts getting pressure as the pressure builds up and that'll be interesting because we're going to change the size of these lines chain different components and we'll see how fast that pressure builds up but ultimately what we are really worried about is the speed of actuation here uh, take a shot every time i say that apparently because i'd be saying there are lots now what i was thinking was two little micro switches but whilst i was uh, digging in the box i found something uh, and it's almost like this ain't my first rodeo it's, it's, it's like i've done this before measuring the speed of actuation we have what appears to be reed switches now a reed switch is a magnetic switch it's very it's a small current cape carrying capability but what it is is two little reeds like this and when they're in a magnetic field they come together 
So what we what looks like has happened is I put a burden resistor on here, maybe 400 ohms, something like that. And um, then these are tied. These are paralleled. And if we look, <laughs> if we look in the middle, it's stripped. Okay, so what I think we'll do here is we'll build a little circuit and then measure these in parallel so that when it actuates one, it'll trigger on here. And when it actuates the other one, it'll trigger on here the same. We don't care because it'll just go high or low. And don't worry if you're not picking this up as I'm putting it down because we're going to go over it. Getting this together and I noticed uh, I needed a jumper. So what we got going on is we got the plus going in and the switches are paralleled. And then we got the two resistors and they're not paralleled. So what we needed to do is we needed to add a jumper right here. That's this guy. And then we put the oscilloscope leads on the one side of the resistor and then the ground of the oscilloscope lead on the other side of the resistor. So when the switch is open, that is the magnet isn't anywhere near it, the oscilloscope doesn't measure any voltage. And then when the magnet comes close, there's current flowing through there and we see a voltage drop. Okay, we got the oscilloscope rolling away there. And we are testing out the uh, pressure drop. Of course, this is a current device, 4 to 20 milliamps full scale. We're looking at half that, so we'll be getting 10 milliamps. We want a voltage drop, what we'll be able to read without too much noise. That's about, oh, I don't know, 10 volts, 20 volts, if at all possible. So this thing will run on 30 volts. I got it running on 30 volts. You'll note that the low pass filter ain't no fucking good at all on account of it being a current device even though we're roundabout, eh, yeah, yeah, yeah. the filter didn't work. So I'm just got the, got the scope probe here on the plus side of the resistor, measuring the voltage drop across there. V equals IR, that means if there's 20 milliamps at 1,000 uh, ohms, that gives us a 20 volt drop. Now, where am I getting that 20 volts from? Guys are asking, of course, about what kind of power supply I use. This is the same power supply what uh, Electro Boom uses. He uh, he does the little unibrow dance there for these guys. So if and you're interested in buying these, go uh, do his affiliate link because I, I don't do that kind of thing. And I tandemized it. Now they're cheap, perfect for the shop, and uh, no big deal. It hasn't lit the house on fire yet, but as you can see, we're open circuit essentially, and we're showing 160 milliamps. So. You get what you pay for, but I do like it just for, for shit like this. Now we'll test her out here. We'll put her on the roll. What for seeing better. Quinch. Ah, for Tom Sachs. I might as well do it right, eh? While we're at it. Fuck it. Glug, 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 glug. Where were we? I feel better already. No, it's not the camera off kilter. Cordat! Okay, so we're building up pressure on the back side there. Nice, nice curve. And then dropping pressure off through the valve. You see that's, uh, that's a very typical uh, half-life. Now this, lads, this is interesting. This is the pressure on the back side, on the, on the blind end of the cylinder. Of course, it's throttled on the way out by that flow control valve. And we see it builds up. There's some stiction. So, uh, stiction is static friction. Diction is dynamic friction. So there's some stiction here. And then we get into the diction. And <laughs> it, it moves. Uh, and then slowly drops off. So we're see we're, we're bleeding that off through that valve. If I change the uh, configuration of the valve, that is close that, close that, uh, what do you call the fucking thing? Valve, rum's going right to my hips. Um, yeah, something fucking something. Oh my God, this channel's gone right in the shit root. This old Tony explains things so much better. I know, right? Brain dead motherfuckers. It help if I turn the camera on. This is a look of her while when uh, we changed the throttle valve. So now instead of the stiction, we're straight into the diction right off the hop. 
interesting artifact. Have a look at that. There's some stiction in the cylinder itself. There's a sticky spot right there. So that's that's the look of uh, retracting slowly. And now I got channel one on. I got seven volts going on here, and we'll see what we can see. Nothing. Perfect. Pretty much. Yeah, that's the when it's throttling. That's what it looked like. I know I didn't show that. That's that little curve from previous. Okay. So we are actuating here, but the the magnet on this guy isn't uh, close enough, so we'll just move that down a little bit. Try that. So that guy's actuating. That guy's not actuating. Pop that down a little bit. Got a bit of an alignment issue. Let's see if we got it right. We'll do a single shot. And... Contact. All right, lucky 13. Single shot. We will see if we can catch her. Corner. Oh, for fuck. Pop goes the weasel. 19. For, fu for fucking brain dead motherfucker. How do you walk and chew gum at the same time? You use both hands. Ah, uh, did we get it? Did we get it? Jeez, Liz Henry Kissinger, we got it. We blip, but we caught it. So the problem here is the magnet is, well, the, the switches are too close together. So the magnetic field is keeping the switch actuated and we're not, it's dropping out, but just for a brief, just a blonde one of a second. So what we need to do is split up those two uh, switches a little bit further apart and also while we're at it with the hot snot glen we might as well go ahead and uh, realign this. Uh, now the magnet is too close to the actuator so we have to trigger on a different thing. We also need to move this uh, horizontal trigger over. So we'll move that over because otherwise it'll trigger in the middle of the screen and we don't have enough chooch for the chotch. And then we'll go menu. And it's triggering on the slope up the rise. So we'll change that to, no, not, that's uh, data. We don't want that one. We want slope down. We want it to trigger on channel one, 200 millisecond scale per division. We'll do a single shot. Cordex. Fucking eh. Some artifacts here, if you'll allow me to amuse myself, will long time, long time to get up to pressure. 200 milliseconds per division. That gives us two seconds in the total. Well, over two seconds in the total to come up to pressure. Quite a bit of time. Also, the switch bounced. Now, did it bounce because the reeds were bouncing? Or did it bounce because when the cylinder hit the stop, there was a, a shutter or something and uh, you know magnetic field kind of moved around and allowed that uh, switch to, to open again so but we can see that's a little bit sticky we can see the time it takes for actuation and because we've glued everything together now we measure that we'll take another shot but we'll measure it a couple times and then we'll average it out and then as we go through the process, we'll see that getting faster and faster and faster. Zoomed in to the width of that signal now, 233, uh, 293 rather, milliseconds. So we'll write that down and I'll try it a couple more times. That's how long it took to get from switch A to turn off switch A and turn on switch B. Stacking them off like cordwood, another interesting point is that depending on the, the pressure in the tank, it goes quicker or slower. Makes a sense, but didn't really think of that. There's so much fucking going on. You can only concentrate on one dimension, maybe two dimensions if you're brilliant at a time. So we can see here at the low pressure, right before the kick on, 279 milliseconds. And then after it kicks on and comes up to pressure, uh, 243, 247, 263. So we can see that pressure dropping slowly and then uh, the last one was 273 and now we kicked on and we'll check it again uh, 
And we can see 241, 241. So we do have a pattern. Now that that labor of love is done, we have our, our numbers, our baseline, and uh, we, uh, now we can make improvements. What improvements we gotta make? We want faster actuation, and we want to automate it. How do we automate it? We get a confuser in the mix. A confuser can only control a uh, pixie. So we need to make an electric choo-choo valve. Here we go, same valve. If we look at the conveniently easy to wipe away label, the same valve, it's a uh, three position, five way, one, two, three, four, five way, and three position, by, denoted by the three boxes. Solenoid actuated with the spring detent to get her back in the middle. So you know if you de-energize the solenoids, it goes back to the center position. Big difference here though, and this might be salient, it might not make any fucking difference at all. This one is closed center. This guy is open center, so this allows the cylinder to float wherever it wants. There's no pressurized air in the cylinder in the middle position. When this guy's in the middle position, it exhausts all the air. When this guy's in the middle position, it blocks all the air in. So, whether or not this is going to actually be faster will will be contingent on how fast we can get the air out of the back side of the cylinder. Essentially, that, that's it. Because now, both sides of that cylinder, instead of having nothing in this end and then blasting air in here and it's shooting out, now, with the electric valve, this is going to have a big spring in it. And that spring is the air. So when we flip that chooch valve, we gotta not only pressurize this side, but we also gotta force all the air out of here. Will it make a difference? We'll soon find out. All right, we got the new valve installated. One serendipitous stumble here at the start gate. I don't have the proper Hirschman connectors for these, uh, also known as DEN connectors. So luckily we can manually actuate these. That'll take away, that'll tell us how fast the valve is actuating without the electronicals. Uh, also, I, I don't have a, I only have the two sour power supplies. I'd have to drag the Rigol out here to power this, so I don't want to do that right away until we know she's going to work. So, uh, step to the rear, dear. Safety first. Eyes, ears, and chug your beers. That's odd. Never ends. Welcome to the world, little buddy. Ain't no picnic. What we'll do is take this A-part. Likely got some schmoo in there. A spit and a prayer, a little wiener sliding. Bob's your auntie, what, what? Yeah, we'll get the end off here. Likely she's stuckified. That's okay. Yeah, a little tight in there. Let's just loosen that up. All right, here's a supersonic chunk of Teflon in your eye. Fuck all happening there. Okay, let's see if we can, let's actuate it electrically, see if we can get this thing even moving. Now we got around 15 volts, a million amps. I'll try and get this thing, you know, give her a little extra. Okay. And, ah, uh, sparking, not even trying. Not even trying. Something wrong on this end. Yeah, look at this. A note from the past to the future. <laughs> I do not recall putting that mark on there. This side. Something wrong with this side. Fuck, it moves now. What the fuck, over? Let's pull that out. Ah. Dun, dun, dun. I told you so. I told you Oh, you so. That's what everybody's saying on account of me using Teflon tape. I like Teflon tape because it, for air fittings, because it seals up right away and piped up. Yeah, it gets all over the place. But you see their uh, trap for young gamers. If and you don't pick the Teflon tape out of the carcass before you put a new fitting in, that's what happens. Gets stuck in there. Okay. You know what we, else we can do is we can swap this around. The other way. See if she goes in now. It is quite tight in that bore. 
All right, we got her mocked up here. We're gonna give her a little try. Uh, some air, uh, air leaking out of the sandwich. That's not good. I don't wanna try, no. Oh, oh. Signs of life. Let's get her uh, clear. No, no, no. But uh, it's a start. We have progress. Stick with me, I'll get you there. Okay, we're gonna put on the proper wiener sliding. Here. 800 bucks worth of this stuff. And the trick is, of course, big gob of lube and just, just kind of ease it in. <laughs> Make it a gob to better the job. And then we'll do the same on these guys. There's a single lip seal and then a Looks almost like a bearing or a wear ring, depending on what part of the country you're from. Look at that on there. Why was that not sealing? I'm gonna jam some more on the seat. Fucking dirty mind. Okay, give her another try here. Ah, oh, for fuck's sake. That one's still working. So this side's this side's still fucked. For whatever reason. Something wrong. Well, X marks the spot. <laughs> I'll give her a try here. Pay peanuts, you get monkeys. I have the solution. They make these things in factories every day. Every day. Oh, I fucking silicone. Fuck you. Fucking. Fuck you, you fuck. Oh. Oopsie. Fuck you! Oh, I can't even hit the fucking bucket. Oh, that's better. If it was easy, somebody else would have already done it. The first ever cylinder wachooch is back and forth in the history of the world for frog snacks. Okay, so the Empire of Dirt should give up the goods to us. A little bit oddball, however. I refuse to be, well, unless I ask for it, fucked over by an animated object. These are a little bit weird. So I got two of them. So they should replace that tree way on account of having two of them. But they're solenoid uh, release. No, how would you, uh, solenoid exhaust. So when we, when we power up the solenoid, it exhausts the air. So when these are de-energized, they're flowing air into either side. So that's kind of a oddball fucky way to do it where if you want the thing to release, you gotta exhaust the air. What We can work around that, at least wise, until we uh, go to the store and get a proper valve. I got the both valves actuated. That means they're both exhaust. Now watch what happens when I let go, both of them. It slowly pushes out. That's because the effective area of the blind end of the cylinder is larger than the front end, so it, it naturally pushes out, but this guy, is going to be pressurized as well as this guy, and I'll prove that to you. We'll exhaust it. And we exhausted a bunch of air out the front. Now we can exhaust out the back, and it should start moving backwards. We're forcing that air through this little valve. We'll open that up, and it'll it'll go faster even. There we go. Okay, so let's try and actuate and see what kind of speeds we get. We're going to test her out. We'll exhaust the rod end. And now we'll pressurize the blind end. Looks like the scope is ready to rock. And, whoa, wow. Even quicker and way quicker. And the compressor isn't even on. That's the second. Exhaust and give her a walk. 91 milliseconds. Huge! That's, and that's manually actuated on these solenoid valves. Now, she's chooching way faster, but I'll turn that off. Voice of experience here. I, this is not my first rodeo, so you look at the amount of time we've spent just fucking around. If you've already if it's easy, it's because you've already done it and you're not learning anything. Here's the thing. I've done this before and it's it's like banging my head up against a brick wall. 
I want it to say though, these are the wrong valves. So rather than dick around with the wrong valves, this is the experience talking now, dicking around with the wrong components, we go and get the right components. Guys will email me all the time, hey, I found a pump or I found this, that, the other thing, I want to build a log splitter. You do not build a piece of gear what you want, you know, maybe for a prototype, but if you're actually going to use it, you, you build the piece of gear with good known parts that are the right parts instead of doing a workaround where this valve and you got to hold your tongue in the wrong position and all this. Just spec it out and, and buy the right parts because in the long run, it's, it's a cost savings. It's a false economy to go and use junk parts when they're not the right parts in the first place. You know what I'm saying? So here we go. This is not hashtag Instagram welders. This is not Norm Abrams on PBS building a, a cabinet for the second time. I'm building this on the fly and I'm fucking up, quite frankly. And it's, uh, it's very frustrating. But this is where it's at. This is bumblefuckery 101. This is, this is how things get built the first time. They don't ever fucking work. So rather than continue banging my head and possibly yours I, I hope i hope we're learning something together and maybe having a laugh at my expense we got to get to proper valve when we get to proper valve we'll go ahead and connect it up to the plc rather than dicking around and, and patch job and this and and the work around and this that the other thing you know only so much of that a man can take you know what i'm saying thanks for joining me i appreciate it keep your dick in a voice